Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, for this re-recording. We, uh, we had a client event last Thursday and wanted to take the content uh, and the information that we ultimately gave to those live and attempt to get it out in an efficient way for all of you uh, this, this morning. So thank you for joining. We really appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. My name is Mike Schonholz. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for ARG. Uh, very excited to have some of our special guests here who I'll introduce in a moment. But the content for today is really around um, the experience that we've had in the tens of thousands of both physical and virtual moves uh, that we've done over the course of our 30-year history. We believe there are four winning tactics you absolutely must implement to guarantee success. And in our experience, there are thousands of ways to get ready, get prepared, and protect your business. Um, but in our experience, we wanted to condense that down to four winning strategies. Number one is we believe a strong backup and DR strategy is critical before you move anything to the cloud. Whether you're moving to the cloud, uh, closing a data center, or physically moving your office, uh, this is the first step in that journey. I can't tell you how many clients are evaluating cloud services or attempting to move more of their applications to either software as a service uh, or public cloud that don't have a strong business continuity or DR plan. When I go out, I often ask clients that we meet, who handles your backups? And most often the response is the local MSP. I then ask, what is their DR plan? And most of them say they have one, but really it's restoring from tape or from recent backups. The bigger question is, when was the last time you tested? And I usually get one of two answers. We typically hear we haven't tested ever, or we just had an issue and it turns out our backups haven't been run recently and we experienced a loss. This just isn't a thing anymore. And you should never move anything to the cloud without a solid backup or DR strategy already in place. And you should never move uh, with your business in such a risky, risky position. We're going to hear today from some of our um, uh, premier suppliers, uh, really disruptors in this space, as well as one of our clients, ILA, about the critical first step that they took that really needs to be done right now. And even if you have an impending move coming in the next year or two, uh, no better time than now to protect your business. And the reality is, with the changes in the market, it costs about the same as your Xfinity or Direct TV bill. So really, the financial uh, hurdles that were there a few years ago just don't exist anymore. Once you've protected your business, uh, enabling a work from anywhere strategy is critical. And that could be through the lens of moving critical infrastructure into either a public or private cloud, or more commonly, it's looking at uh, ways in which your coworkers can work regardless of where they are or what device they have in their hand. UC is typically the solution, unified communications as a service that we implement in every thriving organization we support. Believe it or not, we still meet clients every day on unsupported or legacy voice technology where they're still sweating existing on-premise phone investments and working on month-to-month -month contracts with legacy telcos for PRIs. Again, much like uh, not protecting or having a sound business continuity or DR plan, this just is not a thing anymore and creates enormous risk uh, for your business. Out in the marketplace, we've seen consolidation, we've seen bankruptcies. Uh, certainly, most recently, we've seen a bankruptcy with one of the largest you know, US-based telecommunications suppliers. And the reality is, uh, it's going to get more and more difficult over time to work with these companies as some of the best talent uh, moves on to other you know, more fruitful places. Um, we actually had a client who implemented a sound DR plan, leveraged desktop as a service in combination with their UC platform, you know, to create a seamless mobile experience for their workers. In fact, at ARG, you know, we've leveraged all of the same for our business. Uh, this particular client, though, is in the middle of a physical move to a new space in Crystal City. And if you're from the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area or been reading the news in the last two years, you know that we are rebranding Crystal City as National Landing, and that's going to be Amazon's HQ2. We have a lot of our clients moving down to that area. It's a hot area. Um, their building actually won't be ready for two more months, but their lease ended 30 days ago at their previous uh, office location. They implemented these winning tactics over the last 12 months and plan to be working remotely for three months 
and it hasn't crippled their business at all. In fact, their coworkers are always connected and their memberships being served with no idea their entire association is working out of their living rooms. Uh, this particular organization's biggest challenge is at this point gonna be getting those employees back to the office. The final piece that we're gonna to explore today is sound redundancy. Um, this can be accomplished better today in 2019 than even just three years ago when many of you signed your last telecommunications contract. Just three years ago, your strategy was to add two networks, MPLS and some internet backup. If the MPLS network went down, your business went on life support, you limped along on a cable circuit, but at least you had email. Uh, this also just is not a thing anymore. Whether it's deploying a cost-effective SD-WAN solution and leveraging the best, most efficient path in combination with a wireless solution, redundancy means today, always non, not primary and backup. Um, it means fully utilizing those investments. Um, what it also means is managing the applications versus managing the bandwidth or throwing bandwidth at a problem. It means getting out from underneath the telecom cartels and the bad contracts that they've historically used to hold you hostage. And what do I mean by that? Well, you all have applications with uptime requirements, whether it's 5.9 or others that could be down for some time or could be slow and it wouldn't impact your user or client experience. But if you can achieve application SLAs with a combination of Comcast internet and wireless, do you really care what kind of bandwidth you have in 2019? You shouldn't uh, because that's the future. The future is an application economy and being able to manage to those application SLAs regardless of how you're connected because at the end of the day, you care about that user experience, you care about your client experience. We've got some great guest speakers with us. Um, we've got Pat McGugan. Pat McGugan runs our mobility and managed services practice here at ARG, long-term industry veteran, and um, brings a wealth of knowledge to our customers every single day. Uh, appreciate you being here. Um, next, we got Michael Thompson. Michael is a co-founder and runs strategy for Sky Data Vault. Um, Sky Data Vault is a leader in the backup and recovery space. They are laser focused on helping customers protect their business with managed uh, disaster recovery as a service, and Mike's got a lot to share. So thanks for being here. Pleasure. And then finally, we've got uh, uh, Jimmy Malik. Jimmy uh, runs Mid Atlantic, and then for Vonage here locally, he's got a ton of experience, uh, not just here in the Beltway, but nationally, uh, helping customers across a variety of verticals. Um, and Jimmy um, works for one of the leaders in the unified communication space. I would actually say one of the disruptors and innovators in the unified communications as a service space. Um, Every single day, we're going out and redefining what customers think about their telephone system. And it's not about replacing the PBX anymore. And I'm looking forward to you talking about some of the ways that you not only de-risk uh, your client's business, but also some of the anecdotes that you have uh, around what, what that means. Yeah. Um, and Josh. And Josh uh, is also here with us. Josh, you are uh, with us virtually. And hopefully, everyone can see Josh on video as well. Uh, Josh runs operations for TierPoint here locally. Uh, TierPoint is a leading provider of, um, of data center and cloud solutions in the United States. And uh, again, I would put them in that same bucket of a firm that's out there really disrupting and reimagining the way that customers uh, think about deploying deploying their infrastructure. So, Josh, thank you for uh, thank you for being here with us, and uh, thanks for doing so virtually. So, let's get started. I mean, we started with. Um, we started with backup and DR kind of being the first first logical step. Um, in your opinion, Michael, what's the first step anyone should take if they're planning a move physical or virtually? Yeah, so thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, thanks for having me for joining today. So I, I I think as I had these conversations, and we have hundreds of these conversations every every year, it's it's surprising how many folks have something in place but haven't tested it. So having something in place is a great first step, uh, whether it be backup or a full DR uh, process. But I think one in four is the, the statistic that we use a lot in that folks that have actually tested it in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And what that happens when you enter into a high-risk business scenario like virtually moving your office or actually physically moving the office space, there's so many variables that are outside your control that not having a fallback option or a way to recover or to work in, uh, in a situation outside of your physical production environment today, uh, put your business at a huge risk. So I always encourage anyone, that no matter what they have today or if they're looking at us or an ARG solution, to make sure they test it prior to going into the actual uh, move uh, experience. Yeah, that's, 
that's great feedback. Um, you know, maybe we'll start with Jimmy. Given that response from Michael, um, he gave an example of how moving voice uh, prior to a move helps clients de-risk their business. Absolutely. Um, I, I'd, I'd have to say same sentiments as um, what Mike was talking about with, with voice. Um, times have changed. You know, you are uh, thinking about so many things when you're thinking about moving to a new space, right? You got to figure out, you know, where everybody's sitting. You got to figure out, you know, where you're going to bring in all of your other um, sort of, you know, where's your coffee machine going to go, right? There's so much to think about prior to making a move. Um, and, and in today's sort of uh, telecommunications world, um, to your example that you used earlier, um, everyone has the ability to start early. And I think that's the most critical message that we need to kind of take out of this. Um, you have the ability uh, to take all of our unified communications prior to a move, uh, get everyone trained, set up, and really put them in a sort of virtual environment so they don't have to worry about lugging an 80-pound box out of a closet and moving it to a new space, uh, thinking about cabling and wiring and all these things. You know, it's really critical that you start that process really early because there's so many things that are going to come fall on your plate last minute. Um, as, as somebody working in IT or even a, an executive of the business uh, that you may not foresee. So, you know, uh, our stance is take what you're doing with phones, telecommunications, and UCAS, sit with your UCAS vendors that ARG provides, check that thing off the box six months to a year in advance, and when you're ready to make the move, that's already done. So, yeah. you know, I think that's that's one of the check boxes you can get done really early um, and then implement when you're ready. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, that's 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 great. As far as um, education of those end users, you know, typically what does that what does that look like for a company? So if I'm thinking about moving in six months, yep. I'm going to have a ton on my plate coming up to that move date. What is education of those end users, and how can a company stage that education so that when they move, that's not on their plate at all? It's it's extremely critical to make sure that people are ready, right? Um, you know, can I just pick up my equipment or just log into my mobile application and be ready to go? Um, to your point, if you don't know how to use it, how are you going to do it, right? Um, and a lot of companies today in our world and a lot of the companies that you guys represent and offer, um, they all have multiple modes of training methods, which are amazing. Uh, the first and easy one is a WebEx, right? Kind of like what we're doing today. You can have your administrative staff and everyone sitting in your location or virtually, and you have a representative from the UCAS company literally training them on every piece of the solution prior to moving. You can also have people physically come into your office, right? Um, no matter where you are nationally, the UCAS providers can also send a training team out to that office six months in advance, three months in advance, or right prior to the move if need be, and say, hey, how are we going to you know, make, make sure end users know how to use the system? Um, and the third method, I think, uh, is probably the best because different people like to learn different ways, right? Um, maybe me being in a sort of classroom setting is not the best way for me to learn. So particularly our company and some of the others in our space, we have a ton of material if you go right to our website, right? You can go to our YouTube channel. You can download videos. You can download handbooks and hand guides. So I think going back to kind of your point, if I'm making a move, I don't want to worry about doing all this right as I'm trying to figure out where the couch is going in my new space. Yeah. I want everyone to know in advance. So um, all the UCAS providers, particularly the ones that ARG partners with, they have all these different modes of training that they can provide to their to their customers. Yeah, because that end user experience is kind of kind Critical. of first and foremost. Yeah. So Josh, um, we've talked about de-risking the business. We talked about protecting the business. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see as customers are now moving their infrastructure to the cloud um, that you see clients clients make? Maybe you can give an a, a example specifically of of one that's gone well or not so well uh, recently. You know, I've seen a lot of both, both Mike. Um, really, the biggest mistake folks make is not looking before they leap, um, not rationalizing uh, where they are today and where they want to be, um, taking a holistic approach, um, understanding uh, all of their workloads, doing an analysis on those workloads. Are they just going to be uh, migrating the physical infrastructure to a new computer closet? Are they going to uh, be moving some applications to the cloud? Um, those are all things that need to be addressed, analyzed, and understood what the impact of moving applications into a different environment would be. Um, going through 
uh, a defined uh, process of rationalizing all of those uh, and adding intelligence is uh, going to be very helpful in understanding uh, a, a path toward digital transformation. Can I can I put you on a spot and uh, and and can you sure. give an example where clients do it really well and where maybe they haven't done it so well? Yeah, the ones that do it really well are um, deploying uh, a discovery tool within their environment um, that will analyze everything that's going on, um, what applications are talking to one another, uh, what applications are compatible with different uh, hyperscale environments. Uh, it will give you uh, intelligence on whether those applications need to be refactored, rewritten um, before moving into a different environment. Um, the ones that don't do it so well don't go through that process and assume that lifting and shifting those applications to a different environment, they'll function just fine, uh, where they in turn do not, and it leads to, uh, you know, unavailability of those applications, um, uh, intercommunication between different application stacks breaking, and just uh, bad consequences for the end users. Yeah, so cloud's not inherently secure and it doesn't turn itself on. Um, so we, we, we know right. that for certain. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and making it, yeah, it's not, not, not the be all end all. Um, certainly lifting and shifting uh, and then optimizing is one strategy, but making a data-driven decision uh, and understanding the environment at detail is, is, is best practice. Um, so it's a lot to consider, though. Um, how does Manage DR make that, make that easier? That's a good question, and I, I think when you look at the environment, you look at your options in the marketplace, there's really the chance to build it yourself and run it yourself, where now your organization is taking on the care and feeding, the maintenance, the monitoring, the managing, the maintaining, and the testing to uh, ensure that they have a well thought out and, um, you know, or, or an organization-wide DR strategy that makes sense. The managed component is really the big differentiator, and that's what we've decided to, to go to market with. So when we talk about a managed service with Sky Data Vault, it is a portfolio of services that allows the customer to focus on their core mission whether it's a nonprofit or a business or an organization. And the service runs in the background so that if they do need care and feeding, it's handled by the, the organization. Mm -hmm. um, what we have found is that the DR process can get very complex and not necessarily every organization has the time or the staff resources to do the complexity, especially if there's a DR event. If someone is doing a physical move and the space isn't ready, the circuits aren't ready, and a recovery is required, it's a very complex kind of uh, recovery solution. Mm -hmm. And you leveraging the experience with a managed ER provider, someone who does this in the frequency that AR, ARG does this, um, you get the, the benefit of that expertise. So the benefit of getting up and, and operational very quickly, and then when you're ready to actually move, the orchestration back down is very well managed as well. Yeah. So that's the key differentiator is, is does it make sense for your organization to do it yourself, or does it make sense to leverage an expert, an, an expert in the field? So I'm going to put you on the spot again. So a couple weeks ago, I know together uh, we came in and played the role of Coast Guard to a client who needed some help. That's right. They did not have a sound DR plan. Can you just give a little bit of detail, you know, certainly confidentially, but a little bit of detail about the scenario that they were in and, well, and, and what we ended up doing there? Yeah, I think it's, it's something that we run into more often than not where someone has taken on a role. In this case, the person wasn't a technologist, but they took on the role of managing the technology for the organization. I don't think she was on site more than six months. And the servers that the organization was running on, their, their mission critical applications were out of warranty and, and wheezing. And one of the hard drives failed. And, um, you know, ARG got Sky Data Vault involved. And once that hard drive was stable, we were able to get our, um, our technology um, to protect that environment, and we got a note back from the the, uh, the woman, and, she, and this is the first time she could take you know have a have sleep at night mm -hmm. because she wasn't she was in such a panic mode because of that hard drive failed she had no recovery at all yeah so it, it's nice when you hear these types of stories but it does talk to the marketplace in terms of there's a lot of potential um, in that marketplace for people to not be protected yeah and it wasn't a fault of theirs I mean she had taken over the mantle of managing that not being a technologist and inheriting what the organization had. 
but they hadn't had the ER strategy in place. They hadn't tested it. They were completely unprepared if something were to happen to their architecture. Yeah. Um, so they're in a they're in a stable state now. They can go to ARG and say, okay, what's the next step? Yeah. Let's let's look forward now that we're in a position of stability. I I have now control over my business again. Yep. And the just the financial realities of being able to execute on that strategy today versus even just two, three, or four years ago. Having DR was cost in many cases cost prohibitive to run two active environments. What does it look like today? Well, it's funny you mention that because I think what was the challenge for this organization was not only the the risk to the business having the aging hardware that was failing, but the replacement cost was in the tens of thousands of dollars plus the implementation time frame that was going to be months worth mm -hmm. of work, uh, consulting fees and, and all that stuff on the front yeah. end. With the managed DR portfolio, we were come in, able to come in for a couple hundred dollars a month and give them the certainty they needed to run their organization and have a fallback option. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, go forward with a confidence in terms of how they approach their next step. Do they look at infrastructure as a service now? Do they want to replace and put on-prem? It puts them in such a better position. And for, I think we joke in some cases, the cost of a cable bill. Yeah. I know mine seems to be exorbitant at home, but yeah. um, I could, you could fully protect an organization's network for the cost of a cable yeah. bill. Imagine buying the Sunday ticket for the last five years to being a Browns fan. Exactly. It's finally turning around for yeah. me. Um, all right, so I'm Josh, I'm going to pop back to you, and then Pat, I think you're going to you're in the best position to bring us home. But um, Josh, any other key items to consider um, now that you've heard kind of where uh, Michael and uh, and Jimmy? Any other key items to consider for for those on the phone when moving to the cloud? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, really uh, identify uh, you know the business drivers internally, where the stakeholders want to be. Uh, develop a three to five year plan um, applications that make sense to move to uh, software as a service or a platform as a service. Um, I would highly encourage that. Um, definitely do not take a one size fits all approach. Uh, there are going to be some workloads, legacy applications, other things that make a lot more sense to be on an on-premise data center or in a hosted private cloud environment. Um, that's managed by a third party. Um, really go through that analysis um, to understand what the right home is for all those workloads. There are a lot of uh, providers out there that could help you through that process, uh, guide you along, uh, you know, talk to ARG. They'll be able to help assist uh, with your cloud strategy. Shameless plug, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Patrick. Um, Regarding redundancy and business continuity and everything you've heard, um, why is a corporate mobility strategy relevant to this conversation with us today? Well, there are a few reasons. Uh, first and foremost is you know the opportunity to move all of your important business process, infrastructure, communications, your data, um, all your corporate resources to uh, a clouded environment, so not on your premises. Having a, a sound mobile strategy around helping people get there makes the most sense. Having everybody come into the office to get the infrastructure together to go out to the cloud just doesn't make sense anymore. People expect to work from wherever they are, whenever they want, on any device in a way that provides the same quality of experience as they've been used to forever. Mm -hmm. We see about 50% of the workforce today uses their mobile phone as their primary communication tool. Guilty, for work. yeah. And about 55% of email is opened on, on a mobile device. Right? So if, with that being said, um, having some level of control, having some level of understanding of what those mobile devices are only makes sense for a business. Over the last few years, a lot of organizations have gone to a, uh, a BYOD policy or bring your own device. Essentially, they just outsource it to the employees themselves. Whatever you want to bring onto the network, great. I don't have to pay for it. I don't have to worry about it. I'll just cut you a check at the end of every month in my expenses. Um, thinking that's a panacea. It just goes away. I don't have to worry about it anymore. But at the end of the day, you're still giving an employee a check. So they're, making, you know, they're essentially spending money on it anyway. They've increased the IT support load because now that team has to support whatever from wherever and whoever wants to bring it in. And third, You've given away all your security. 
because if I lose my personal device, I can go out and replace it. I don't ever have to tell anybody. And especially in a diverse or diversified workforce, so people are everywhere now, nobody ever comes into the office to turn in their old and get the new or do whatever. Um, so, and then, so that's, that's the last you know, piece of that. And then the, the last point I want to make on this is uh, in a corporate environment with support from folks like ARG, we can manage that process for the company. We can help manage the bills. We can help do the support work on the move, add, change, people coming, people going thing. But almost more, more importantly, we can manage that quality of experience in what we call kitting a phone. So when that corporate asset comes in, before it gets handed to the end user, we can make sure the right applications are on there. We can make sure the security suite is on there. We can test and make sure it's going to be compatible with the mobile first strategy that most of our service provider partners are working in today. So it's all about the quality of experience. If people don't feel comfortable, it's not working the way they expect, they're not going to adopt the technology, and you're not going to get the return on the investment that you're, you know, that you're expecting. We're getting into this for a reason. You want to make sure those reasons are being fulfilled. Yeah. So you made some, made some great points there. How does uh, corporate mobility plan enhance business continuity? Well, quite frankly, it's a lifeline. If everything else fails, if your building isn't ready, if the construction isn't done for the install, if the equipment doesn't work when you're, you know, when you're expecting it to, as you're expecting it to, um, your mobile plans, your, your mobile stance allows your people to work from anywhere, right? So I think we'll hear, you know, a story of a little, in a little bit about the space wasn't quite ready when it was supposed to be, and folks were active anyway. Um, you know, so that's real simple. So you have a, a way to get to your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, from a, a, a voice standpoint, um, with the mobile applications and the mobile first strategy, you have a unified presence. Nobody knows that you're on your cell phone. It's your, you know, your mobile app will, you know, conduct itself as if you're working from your desk. Um, and again, it provides your users, your, your internal customers, the ability to collaborate, have access to the information, have a unified presence to the world that they're serving in a way that is seamless, whether you're in the office or, or anywhere on the beach. Yeah. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. We talked a lot about protecting the business, mm -hmm. but um, in the example that I gave earlier, you have an opportunity to promote the business, right? And um, typically when a customer is doing a physical move, especially the client that I mentioned earlier that's moving down to what will be national, national landing, national landing. Um, right. certainly we all ad nauseum heard about HQ2, but um, there's really a rebranding opportunity. There's yeah. an opportunity for a client to use that move to really generate some buzz around their brand and their growth strategy and what they're doing. Um, how does Vonage help there? Or how can a unified comms system help there? Yeah. Um, UCAS providers um, with multiple pillars of technology can really help enhance the brand or marketing strategy or brand strategy for really any organization. And it's interesting that you ask that question because if I'm thinking about a phone system, I'm not thinking about brand strategy. <laughs> I'm thinking about how do I make communications easier. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to show you some ways that you can do that. And I think it's incredibly critical for every organization, you know, not just during a move, um, but in general, to think about what are the different pillars that I can use to enhance my strategy for branding uh, or marketing. So, you know, one of them that is probably the most critical is the ability to use SMS. And a lot of people really don't think about using SMS, although if you look at the statistics, 98% of people open up a text message. 98% is the open rate. I mean, that's incredible. You would never think that. It used to be email, right? I'm doing all my business over email. Even personally, if someone needs to get a hold of me personally, I usually say text is easier. It's a text message, yeah. right? So I'll give you an example, right? Um, Vonage particularly, but I know other companies also in our space are, are starting to adapt these things. Uh, we now do what's called programmable lines, and that is just incredible. Imagine being able to dial a phone number, a.k.a. the business that was moving, and the moment you dialed that phone number, the first thing that happened was it said, thank you for calling such business. I just want to let you know we're moving to X address on this date. It's sort of an automated sort of thing it does. It knows that that person is an outside customer. Um, take it to the next step. 
I'm trying to reach somebody within that organization and I can't get a hold of them, well, we can actually program your phone number to automatically transcribe whatever that person is saying to a mass text message to every single one of your clients, right? Now I know you're moving. Now I know that you're physically not going to be in that building. I better try to find a way to get in touch with you in this new address. Um, but when you want to take all that sort of technology and communications, when you think, think about UCAS um, and, and what we like to call a simplified experience, because that's what this is all about, right? If you think about your DR strategy, if you think about whether it's physical or virtual, and I'm, I'm going to try to round this off with sort of the mobile strategy, because I think that, that's the key here to sort of branding and marketing. Um, you have to be able to be reached no matter where you are at any time of the day, right, in any line of business nowadays. So what I would tell you is, is to kind of round off of what Patrick was saying. As a company and as a brand during a move, the number one critical piece for anybody is to be able to communicate. And you have to be able to communicate across multiple departments. Think about moving. You have the people that are uh, actually physically taking your stuff and moving. You have the people that are putting your infrastructure in place when you're moving. You have the people that have to set up the phones when you're moving. I mean, you have so many pieces. So with a UCAS solution, with a mo mobile first strategy, you have the ability to do every single piece of communication, whether that's a physical phone call, whether that's a text message, whether that's a video conference, all from your mobile device, all from not physically being connected to that layer. And why is that important for brand strategy? Well, if I'm a customer calling into you, trying to figure out what the next piece of your move or my move is, depending on the line of business that I'm in, I can now do that, whether you're physically within that facility or not, right? So again, the mobile first strategy is key for everybody, and that all ties back into not only UCAS, but your DR strategy, your mobile first strategy, and I think just to kind of round this off, just taking everyone's points today, don't wait until the last minute to do these things. Whether it's a year in advance or a year and a half in advance, depending on the size of the organization, depending on what sort of pitfalls can happen with other UCAS providers or technology providers, um, you know, it, it's become more and more clear that engaging a company like an ARG and their partners year in advance doesn't hurt anybody. It just allows you to have that strategy you need so that you're not running around trying to figure out how do I not only make the move in advance, but make sure my customers know that we're enhancing the brand strategy prior to them. Well, just to put an exclamation point on it, as with anything in life, you want leverage. And certainly if you're moving and those delays happen, there's the other side which isn't necessarily our business, but there's holdover costs to those leases. You've got existing landlords that you're moving out of and moving into new if you're doing a physical move. And having leverage in that, not just that immediate uh, uh, issue, yeah. but as you're thinking about a year, year and a half in advance, where you may be going and at what time you may be making that move, having the opportunity to say, well, you know what? Even though my lease is up in January, I'm okay moving in February. I now have the ability to do that and do it successfully in a risk-mitigated way. I have to just say, if I have a physical move coming up, I've virtualized everything using all of these great technologies that Josh and Mike and Pat were all talking about. Man, if I'm a CEO, I'm thinking, I can still do my job virtually. I just saved three months lease, three months rent. Man, I'm going to take that money and invest that back into my people. There's so much you can do if you just think about, why am I not virtualized today? Right? So the message is, is get on the phone with ARG, get on the phone with your providers and start figuring out how to, how to put that strategy in place today, um, even if you don't have a move coming up. Make the change. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate the time. Um, we're going to uh, turn it over to Nick and Phil at International uh, Literacy Association. Uh, these are two individuals that have, have implemented many, if not all, of these uh, strategies to help improve their business, and I think they, they tell a great story. What I love about their story is it's not all completely roses. They had some issues, as you would expect, but I think collectively they're in a heck of a lot better position today uh, than they are. A little bit about I ILA. Um, they have, uh, their membership is 300,000 literacy uh, educators, researchers, and experts across 75 countries. So when we talk about, you know, diversity in, in, in workforce and membership, these guys certainly, certainly embody that. Um, so, Nick, Phil, if you wouldn't mind, um, hopefully your lines are unmuted and we can hear you, uh, hear you two gentlemen, and uh, we'd love for you to tell, tell the audience your, your story and, and what ultimately you guys were able to accomplish. 
Sure. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Phil, and nice to meet you, Nick. Um, and you know, a few years ago, we were looking at our overall environment, our IT structure, and everything that we had in-house. And we had almost 30 servers on site. Um, we we knew that the the equipment that we had was coming to end of life. Um, a lot of it was in dire need of replacement. We were spending a ton of money trying to upgrade or, or, or you know apply patches to software and hardware that just needed to be retired. Um, and that's when we started going down this this journey of getting everything out to the cloud. What other solutions are out there? What what can we do? To, to make our environment better and more resilient. Um, and we, we started down this path. And, you know, like they said previously, we, we moved just about everything to an up-to-date, you know, system. UCAS to, to desktop as a service. We put all of our production servers out into a hosted environment. Um, and then we've had a series of issues, you know, that, that prove that we made the right choice. Um, and recently, you know, this past summer, we actually had a physical location uh, change and we moved office buildings. The, as we were getting all the planning and preparation ready for that move, I was asked, you know, how long is our office going to be down for? And I said, well, it depends on, you know, the phone system. It depends on, on when we're going to have our internet connection lines together. And that's not a really great answer to provide to your director. But the fact that the, the next piece of the story was pro productivity was not going to be impeded. Everyone's going to be able to work from home, uh, work remotely. Even if they didn't want to work at home, they could go to a library or a Starbucks or anywhere else they had an inter internet connection and be able to access all of their resources, whether it be a telephone or, you know, shared files on the network. Everything else was going to be, everything else was already set up and hosted. So there was not going to be any impact to productivity. We didn't have to worry about how long it was going to take Verizon to have our circuit up and running because everybody was going to continue to work just the same. Yeah, the only issue we really ran into was um, people getting tired of working at home and some of them wanting to come into the office. And we're like, okay, now you have to wait <laughs> till the circuit's hooked up. Uh, my, I myself, I hate working at home. So I was in the building every day working on a hot spot also, why we're you know moving desk and setting everything up, running cables, but um, but yeah, that so like the biggest thing was uh, just when can we come back in the work? Because you know I'm tired of seeing my husband and my kids at home. Uh, we are, we did move our development site. We didn't move our development environment to to a cloud in, uh, environment. Um, and when we actually physically moved those boxes, we had two issues. One, we went to turn one of our development servers back up and it wouldn't power back on. And the other one, we had a rail bend on another server and we couldn't mount it back into the rack properly. But again, that was our development environment. It had no impact on day-to-day -day activities uh, for, for our actual, you know, what I like to refer to as a productive part of our staff. You know, our, it's not that our IT team isn't productive, it's we're not, you know, engaging with the customers directly. And the one thing we did to make sure is, um, I know you mentioned the physical movers moving your stuff and equipment. Um, so I decided myself that I'm not trusted movers to move any of our server room stuff. So I physically put everything in my car and made several trips back and forth just to make sure that stuff was all handled with care to try to avoid anything not working again. Here, soldier. Yeah, there's a couple things they, they talked about too that I just want to spend a second on. One is uh, this organization spent a tremendous amount of time and energy preparing for this physical move. And clearly by this story and the, the interaction we had with these folks last time, but I don't, how do you prepare for a vent ramp? You know, how, how do you prepare for the system that's been chugging along for the last three years not turning back on? You know, these types of real life situations, uh, you test and you make sure you're prepared, but you know, life's going to throw you a curveball once in a while, and you got to make sure that you're in a position where you can recover from that and you can still run the business, whether it's through mobility first or a UCAS strategy or manage the ER. Um, this is a great example of how those variables come up, and you never know what, what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and our, our thing kind of was, is um, like, we were kind of ready to move, but it was just like, 
because the building we were in, we leased out to somebody else. So literally, once they signed their lease, we signed ours, and we had to be out in like 30 days. So yeah. everything was already up in the cloud and everything at that point. So at that point, it just became, all right, now we got to get all of our stuff out so that they can come in and start doing what they need to do. So since everything was already hosted in the cloud network, that part was easy. And the only thing that took the most time was getting the circuits hooked up here. Uh, Comcast came and hooked theirs up relatively quickly. But we ran into issues with Verizon because uh, Verizon was like, yeah, the lines are already running to the building. But then when they actually sent the guy out here to look, the lines weren't ran to the building. So then we had to wait for them to run them to the building and then get another run from the DMARC up to our suite. So that's what took the longest. I mean, but we had two, we have 200 meg circuits. So once we got the Comcast one up, we were able to get people in here working. Um, we just weren't on full capacity of both of our circuits at the time. So that's a great opportunity, speaking of how mobile uh, solutions can enhance a redundancy strategy. Um, the advance they've made with 4G LTE in terms of data connectivity, uh, the devices are all enterprise worthy, um, the 4G LTE router. So in those scenarios, it can be a lifeline. So you can run your operation for a short period of time. And when your you know, permanent solutions are installed and up and running, they can become part of your DR strategy. It can be used as a, uh, as a connection in your SD-WAN deployment. You know, it never goes away. As you need to open a remote office in some way, shape, or form, that same box can be used forever in multiple facets. So uh, there really is nothing wasted in any of this conversation. Anything that you bring to bear from, a, from one of the solutions that we've been discussing, you know, lasts forever. It, it never has to change. Yeah, we talked about reusing that equipment as a way to the uh, guest access. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it's not you're not Riding throwing airlock. Yeah, you're not throwing money at something and then never using it again. Right. You're actually using it and and securing the network as well. Yeah, and there's you know there a lot of different models, capex, opex, what have you. So there's there's lots of ways to solve these problems um, moving forward. Yeah, Nick, Phil, I'll, I'll put you guys on the spot. Anything that if you were to get in your time machine and talk to the younger you two years ago, um, that you would have either plan differently, done differently, um, you know, any any gotchas that as you went through the process, you went, gosh, if we had known that, this would have gone just a little, a little smoother? I, I would have wanted to move to the cloud sooner than what we did. Because, um, like, when I started at ILA 10 years ago, the servers that we were on were already a good 9, 10 years old. So you figure – you know, once we hit the 15-year mark with them is when we switched to the cloud. But I would have rather switched over well before that because we had, like Phil said earlier, we had 30 servers. Once we moved them to the cloud, we got it narrowed down to seven, which, yeah. you know, also saves a ton of money because now you're running, you know, uh, 23 less boxes, you know, in the server room. And it just, that that's the only thing I would have done is just move to the cloud sooner than what we did. You know, we used to have once you know HP or EMC have to come out in crazy off hours, you know, eight o'clock at night or so, uh, to come and and try to repair our equipment. That by itself was, you know, it was time consuming, but it also cost a good amount of money. It would have been more effective the sooner that we moved out. Um, it would have been, saved us a lot of time. It would have saved us a lot of money over the years. And, and with the old environment, we were still using. Um Citrix to, you know, work from home and remote, um, not even VPN at that point. And, you know, we always had issues with the Citrix servers, and you can only – a certain amount of people were only allowed to connect at a time. But, you know, now since everything's in the cloud, you know, everybody can log into their own desktop in the cloud whenever, wherever they want. Mm -hmm. um, there's many times I'm on the golf course, and I have to log in to my desktop from the, my phone to do something for somebody real quick. It, it just makes life so much easier. I have no idea what you're talking about there. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not familiar with that. With that implementation strategy. 18, 15 minute meetings. Um, <laughs> that's great, guys. Um, great, great insight there. We really appreciate um, everyone's time. For those of you that have brackets uh, in our ARG pool, good luck. We hope you win. Um, and uh, you all will be getting a deliverable by the end of this week. Um, with some of those uh, with some of those gotchas that we've all experienced in the 10,000 hours and 
10,000 plus moves that we've we've done in our career. So thank you for joining. Really appreciate panelists. Um, uh, Nick, Phil, thank you so much for sharing your experience. We greatly appreciate it. Have a good day, everyone.